If you'd like to turn to 1 Thessalonians and chapter 5, 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, it's page 1938. I'm going to read from the first verse just to get the context. It says, Now as to the times and epochs, brethren, you've no need of anything to be written to you. You yourselves know full well that the day of the Lord will come, just like a thief in the night. While they are saying, peace and safety, security, then destruction will come upon them suddenly, like birth pangs upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. The world is going to be crying out in the last days for peace and security, looking for a way of escape. There'll be a sense of being like a besieged city. We see that again and again in the teaching regarding the last days. You might be hearing something of that as you're going about your daily business, people saying they just can't wait for the end of this lockdown and they're fed up of this and they're fed up of that. That's going to be more and more. There's going to be a clamouring. Let us out of this. Give us some relief. Someone come along, please, and sort all this mess out. It's preparing the way for the man of lawlessness, a world leader. People want peace and security, but sudden destruction will come. It goes on, you brethren are not in darkness, that the day should overtake you like a thief. He's coming like a thief in the night. Who to? Those who were in darkness. But you were not in darkness. Why are you not in darkness? He's brought you out of darkness. You were in the kingdom of darkness. But he's transferred you out of darkness into the kingdom of Amen. his beloved son. And he's given you illumination. Thy word is a lamp unto our feet and a light to our path. God has told us all things beforehand so that when these things take place, we shouldn't be fearful. We should be ready. Are you ready? You're not in darkness, that the day should overtake you like a thief. You are sons of light and sons of day. We're not of night nor of darkness. So then, let us what? Not sleep. Who was asleep? The wise and the foolish virgins. They were all asleep, weren't they? We were thinking a little bit about that last week. And they needed somebody to wake them up. How were they woken up? A voice. Behold the bridegroom. Jesus is coming back soon. Amen? That voice, that should wake you up. Don't nod off again. You're not in darkness that the day should overtake you like a thief. You are a son of light. So, let's not sleep. But let us be alert and self-disciplined. We need discipline in our lives in these days, dear friends. It's tough times. Tough times. 
And so we need to be disciplined. What do we need to be disciplined about? We need to be disciplined in our Bible reading times. We need to be disciplined in our prayers, dear friends. We need not to nod off. We need not to take our ease. We need to push ourselves. We need to shake ourselves. We need to grab ourselves by the scruff of the neck and pull ourselves up and say, come on, stop messing about and get on with what you should be doing. We're sons of light. Wake up. Don't fall asleep. Those who sleep do their sleeping at night, those who get drunk get drunk at night. But since we are of the day, let us be sober, having put on what? The breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. Wake up. Be disciplined. Keep your heart trusting in the Lord, keep yourself in the love of God, and get your hat on. Why? Well, you've got to protect your mind. You need to protect your heart, watch over your heart with all diligence, but you need to protect your mind, your way of thinking. You need to be thinking right. Be alert, be sober, get your hat on. Get your helmet on. Be dressed and ready. Be like a servant waiting for his master. What kind of a hat do you need to put on? It's a helmet. The helmet of salvation. salvation. But it's not just the helmet of salvation. Here in Thessalonians it is called the helmet of the hope of our salvation. It's very important. These three things, <laughs> faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. love. But in the last days, dear friends, the Word of God tells us the most important of these is hope. You've got to have your helmet on. You need to have a hope. You need to be thinking right. Turn to Luke chapter 21. Luke's Gospel, chapter 21, Jesus speaking about the last days. Similar kind of sentiment. Luke 21, 25. There'll be signs in sun and moon and stars and upon the earth, what? Dismay among the nations. What are the nations going to be in? Dismay and perplexity at the roaring of the sea and the waves, men fainting from fear. Dismay, perplexity, fear. No wonder there'll be such a cry for peace and security. Fear of the expectation of the things which are coming upon the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they'll see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When you see, when these things begin to take place, straighten up, lift up your heads, your redemption draws near. There'll be perplexity, there'll be dismay, there'll be fear, but when you see these things begin to take place, what are you supposed to do? You should be starting to look up, because your redemption is nigh. What's the most important thing? 
The world is expecting the worst. What are you expecting? Jesus. Could be back. We need to have a right expectation. It's all important, dear friends, for the last days. Turn to the book of Acts. I've said this many times, and I'm fully convinced of it. I'd have to give an account for it because I've taught it enough. This is a picture of, I believe, the church in the last days, the boat. The boat in the storm. Remember what happens when they end up on the land? Paul is bitten by what? A snake, and the snake is cast into the fire. Okay? We're going to land safely on shore. Praise the Lord. And the Antichrist and the false prophet are going to be cast into, into the fire. But what's the church going through in the last days? One almighty storm. First Timothy <clears throat> Or is it 2 Timothy? 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1 says, In the last days, difficult times will come. Wild times. We're going through a storm. This is the calm before the storm. Okay? Enjoy it. Make the most of it. It's not going to last. Persecution and wild times are coming. Don't hope and puff at this. This this is this is like a little holiday. <laughs> Difficult times are coming. There's stormy times ahead, dear friends. And the church is going through great trouble in the days ahead. Acts twenty seven. I'll read from verse 27. When the fourteenth night had come, as we were being driven about in the Adriatic Sea, about midnight the sailors began to surmise that they were approaching some land. They took soundings, found it to be twenty fathoms, and a little farther on they took another sounding, and it's fifteen. We're heading for land. Fearing that we might run aground somewhere on the rocks, what did they do? The boat is heading for rocks. We're in a storm, it's about to get smashed to pieces, what do you do? You let down the anchors. You let down the anchors. You're in a horrendous <coughs> storm. There's nothing you can do about it. You can't drive out of it. You can't row out of it. You can't get out of it. What's the only thing you can do? Let down the anchors, dear friends. Let down the anchors. And trust God. Do we have an anchor? that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Is it fastened to a rock which cannot move, grounded, firm and deep in the Saviour's love? We do. Hebrews chapter 6. Hebrews and chapter 6. Verse 19 says, this hope we have as an anchor of the soul. A hope both sure and steadfast and one which enters within the veil. Where Jesus has entered as a forerunner for us. 
having become a high priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. We have an anchor, dear friends. What do you do when you're in a horrendous storm, the boat's going to be smashed to pieces, but you are going to land. You are going to be saved. You let down the anchors, dear friends. That's what you do. It's the only thing you can do is cast down the anchors. What do we need to do as we go through this horrendous storm ahead? Cast down your anchors. Make sure that your hope is alive, that it's strong. Make sure that you have on your helmet, which is the hope of salvation. Very, very important. It's the most important part of your attire for the coming days. Your anchor. Your hope. What is it then? Let's look at one or two scriptures. Acts chapter 24. Acts chapter 24, verse 14, Paul, on one of the number of occasions that he had to make his defense, and this is part of his submission. Verse 14, this I admit to you, that according to the way which they call a sect, I do serve the God of our fathers, believing everything that is in accordance with the law and that is written in the prophets, having a hope in God, which these men cherish themselves, that there shall certainly be a resurrection of both the righteous and the wicked. What is our hope? There shall certainly be a resurrection. What are you hoping for? To be alive Jesus. Our hope is the resurrection. Is it certain? Yes. Absolutely certain. It is based upon the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our first fruits. The first fruits of the resurrection, as surely as Jesus rose from the dead, so will you. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Can anything change that? No. Can tribulation? No. Can trouble? No. Can difficulty? No. No. The trumpet will sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise, and we shall be changed. And nothing's going to change it. Titus chapter 2. The book of Titus and chapter 2. Verse 11 says, The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all men, instructing us to deny ungodliness and worldly desires, to live sensibly, righteously, and godly in the present age, looking for the blessed hope. What is it? The blessed hope. The appearing of the glory of our great God and Saviour, Jesus Christ. What's our hope? The appearing of Jesus, our great God and Saviour. Is he coming? Yeah. Yes, he is. What's the only hope for this world? Jesus is coming. He's coming back to reign as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Is that a blessed hope? Yeah. 
praise the Lord it is. What are we expecting? Trouble. More trouble, and even more trouble after that. But what are we looking for? The resurrection and the appearing of our great God and Saviour, Jesus Christ, who's coming back to reign, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Can anything change that? That is our blessed hope. It is our blessed hope. Oh. Titus chapter 3 verse 7 that being justified by his grace we might be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life when you're resurrected in your new body what have you got? eternal life dear friends no more pain, no more dandruff, no more arthritis. Eternal life. No more acne. Praise the Lord. <coughs> what else? Colossians 1 and verse 27. The mystery, hidden from past ages and generations, now manifested to his saints, to whom God willed to make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. What are you hoping for? Glory, dear friends. What a day that will be. Are we hoping for a lot of trouble? A lot of misery? No, we're hoping for glory, dear friends. We're going to see him in all his glory. You're going to be transformed into glory. We're waiting for glory. Glory, dear friends. What a glorious hope. It's a glorious hope. Because it's a hope of glory. A hope of glory. 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 1. What is our hope? In one word. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, according to the commandment of God, our Saviour, and of Christ Jesus, who is our hope. What is our hope? Our hope, dear friends, is Jesus. Our hope is Jesus. He's coming. We shall be like him. We shall be with him. Our hope is Jesus. Is that your expectation? Is that what is guarding your mind? Is that what you're looking forward to? Is that consuming your thoughts? Because it needs to be. Have you got your helmet on? How do we put it on? Well, First Peter chapter 1. The only way you're going to wear this helmet, if you are born again. We are born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. If you are not born again, you don't have this hope. You are without hope and without God in this world and you must be born again except a man be born again he will not enter the kingdom of God 
And until you are born again, you do not have this hope. Have you got this hope this morning? Have you got this expectation? Is your way of thinking? You're looking forward to Jesus coming back. What a glorious day. More and more birth pangs. More and more trouble in this world. More pestilence. More plagues. More COVID. More wars. More racial trouble. Praise the Lord. Jesus is coming. That's our way of thinking. You say that's a very strange way of thinking. It is. But it's a biblical way of thinking. Romans chapter 15. <clears throat> Romans chapter 15. Verse 13. Memorize this verse. Now, may the God of hope fill you with all joy... And peace. Have you got joy this morning? And peace in believing that you may abound in hope. How are you going to abound in hope? By the power of the Holy Spirit. Why do you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit for the last days? Number one, you need all joy and peace in believing. Number two, you need to be abounding in hope. And how are you going to be abounding in hope? By the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, dear friends, will take your eyes off this world and fix them up in glory. You'll be waiting for Jesus. You'll be longing for Jesus when you're filled with the Holy Spirit. It's always been the way, dear friends. Whenever there has been revival, there's been a... Breaking forth of the preaching of the return of Jesus Christ. The early Pentecostals. Are you ready? Jesus might come tonight. That was the preaching. It always has been. By the power of the Holy Spirit we are bound in hope. Our expectation is the return of Jesus. Are you filled with the Holy Spirit? Turn to the book of Lamentations, Lamentations and chapter 3. Quite well known scriptures here. Mm -hmm. Lamentations 3, I read from verse 19. Remember my affliction, my wandering, the wormwood and bitterness, surely my soul remembers. And he's bowed down within me. I'm miserable. Ever miserable? Well, there's a scripture here especially for you. A scripture for miserable times. Wormwood. Bitterness. <clears throat> Grumbling and miserable and bitter. What's the answer? This... I recall to my mind, therefore, I have hope. How do you get out of being miserable and bitter? Get your helmet on. It's a wrong way of thinking. It's a wrong way of thinking. We need to recall the right things to mind. Amen? When we're feeling miserable and feeling sorry for ourselves, what do we need to remember? Jesus is coming back. The trumpet will sound. My hope is glory. He's coming back as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I'm going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye. And can anybody take that away or change it? No. It's immutable. It is a sure and steadfast 
whole, that anchors our souls within the veil. Amen? Get your helmet on. Why is it so important? Let's look at one or two things. Second Corinthians and chapter 3. What will a right hope produce within our lives? And what's a good measure as to whether we've got our helmets on? You can look at it either way. 2 Corinthians 3 and verse 12. Having therefore such a hope, what? We use great boldness in our speech. When you've got your helmet on firmly and right, what will you have? Boldness. Great boldness in speech. You won't be frightened of telling somebody about Jesus. You won't be frightened of declaring the gospel to anybody. When you've got a right view of eternity, of your hope, of what lies ahead, of what's important in life. Amen? Amen. It's logical, it's reasonable, it's rational. When we're not bold, it's because we're not thinking right. And we need to get our helmet on. The hope of eternal life. The hope of glory. The hope of resurrection. The hope of Jesus. Titus chapter 2. I think we might have read this. I can't remember if I read all the verses. <laughs> Titus chapter 2, verse 13, looking for the blessed hope and the appearing of the, great <clears throat> of the glory of our great God and Saviour, Christ Jesus, who gave himself up for us, that we, he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself a people for his own possession, zealous for good deeds. Zealous for good deeds. When we've got a right hope of the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ, there'll be a zeal in our life to serve Jesus. There'll be a zeal in our lives to serve Jesus. A right understanding of the grace of God, a right expectation of His appearing, will give us a zeal to serve Him. What else? Romans chapter 5. Romans and chapter 5. What else does a right hope help us with? Romans chapter 5 verse 3. Not only this, but we also exult in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance, perseverance proven character, and proven character hope. Hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Hope helps us in tribulation. Hope, a right hope, helps us through tribulations, pressing times, difficult times. Why? We just want to get out of here. Let me out. Maranatha. Come Lord Jesus. But enough of this. A glorious hope. Second Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 17, for this reason I sent to you Timothy, sorry, I'm in 1 Corinthians. Momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. 
while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Momentary, light affliction, compared to an eternal weight of glory. <clears throat> A right hope will help us through great difficulty, troubled times ahead. And it will keep us looking up. What else will it do? 1 John chapter 3. 1 John and chapter 3. A right expectation and hope will get us to clean our lives up. Your life a bit dirty? Well, you need a right hope. You need to get your helmet on. 1 John chapter 3, verse 2, Beloved, now we are children of God. It has not appeared as yet what we shall be. We know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him just as he is. Everyone who has this hope fixed on him purifies himself, just as he is pure. Jesus He's coming back, and he's coming back soon. Is your life clean? Is your house sorted out? Are you ready to meet with him? He who has this hope purifies himself. I don't want to be caught doing this when he comes. Let's get this sorted out. Let's get this thing out of my life. I don't want to be raptured with a PS4 controller in my hand. I want to be raptured with the Word of God in my hand. <coughs> Amen? Amen. Amen. What else? Romans chapter 12. Romans and chapter 12. Verse 12, it says, Rejoicing in hope. Are you rejoicing this morning? Yeah. Rejoice in the Lord? Oh. Always. Again, I'll say it. Rejoice. Rejoice. Let your forbearing spirit be known to all men. The Lord is near. What's a forbearing spirit? We put up with miserable, rotten Christians. Just put up with them. <laughs> so they're a bit obnoxious and they say stupid things. So what? Doesn't matter, does it? Does it? No, it doesn't. Why do people get so wound up about what people say? Well, it's pathetic. It's pathetic, amen. <laughs> do you really think when the trumpet sounds and you're gathered up together to be with the Lord, you're going to be turning round and saying, Oh, he think that about me. <laughs> God forbid. God forbid, let your forbearing spirit be known to all men the Lord is near. Rejoice, dear friends. Rejoicing in hope. We're the only people on the face of this planet that can honestly and genuinely rejoice always. This world has nothing to rejoice about. It's going from bad to worse, and from worse to worse still. It has no hope and no future. It's reserved for destruction and the wrath of God. 
But are you? Yeah. Praise God, no. <laughs> We're being kept for the Master. Kept for the Master. We're rejoicing in hope. Rejoicing in hope. One last thing. It keeps us walking right with God. <clears throat> in the book of Genesis... And chapter 5, there was a man called Enoch. Remarkable man. Remarkable man. I don't know if you've ever pondered this. At 65 years old, this man got saved. At 65 years old, he got saved. And he walked with God. For how long? Forever. Three hundred years, dear friends, he walked with God. So I've been saved a few years, but I, I, I'm, I'm a bit up and down. Well, forget the up and down. Enoch walked with God for three hundred years. Think about that. Isn't that wonderful? Yeah. You can walk with God for three hundred years, dear friends. By faith, Enoch walked with God. And by faith, he was taken no. up. He was not anymore. He used to go out and walk with God. And then he'd say to God, Lord, I, I need to go home now. The wife will be wondering where I am. He would walk with God every day. And then one day, God said to Enoch, You're not going on. You're coming to my place today. And off he went. He was taken up by faith, dear friends. He knew the day was coming. You know the day is coming when you're going to be taken up. You're going to be taken up to be with God. Praise the Lord. And he walked with God 300 years. He walked with God. With an expectation. One day when he was out walking with God, in the twinkling of an eye, he'd be gone. Straight into glory. Changed in the twinkling of an eye. Have you got that same expectation? Have you got your helmet on? Have you got your helmet on? Because it will help you walk with God. Right. Close with one scripture. Hebrews and chapter 11. I'm not going to go through it in any detail. Abraham, the father of all them that believe. It says, by faith Abraham, when he was called, obeyed. By going out to a place which he was to receive for an inheritance, he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith he lived as an alien in the land of promise, as in a foreign land dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, fellow heirs of the same promise. For, because... How did he do it? He was looking for the city which has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. What are you looking for? What are you waiting for? What is your hope and expectation? A city whose architect and builder is God. And if you've got that same expectation that Abraham had, what can you do? You can walk with God. What can you do? You can go out not knowing. What can you do? You can obey God. You can dwell as an alien in a foreign land pilgrim passing through. You're a citizen of heaven. 
This is not your home. And you can dwell in tents with awkward believers, obnoxious Christians. Fellow heads. But one day you're going to meet in the air with Jesus. Have you got your helmet on? If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, it's the way you'll be thinking. May God grant that we have this hope alive, abounding. It will help us walk right with God. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that you'll help us to have on this wonderful helmet of the hope of our salvation while the world is clambering for peace and safety that we will lift up our eyes knowing that our redemption draws nigh. Lord, help us to live in this expectation. Help us to walk with God as Enoch, who was no more, for God took him. Lord, thank you for a glorious hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to live in the light of it, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.